Thank you everyone for joining. My name is Aniket Moria. I am a developer advocate at Lightning AI. In this workshop, we will talk about building AI agents with tool use. And before I start, uh, just give me a quick uh, like guide on how you can ask questions. So in this Google Meet, on the right bottom, you will see an icon, a uh, triangle and a square as a circle. So if you click that, you will find Q&A. So you can uh, go there and ask your question. You can also post anonymously. So feel free to ask any questions that you might have during the presentation. And I will address it shortly. Yeah. Um, yes, there's already a question. Okay. So I will address the questions later on. So let me see if my screen is set up correctly. Awesome. So uh, this is my uh, social handle. If you want to connect with me on LinkedIn or Twitter, you can also scan this QR code to get the link to some of the resources that's being used in this presentation. Uh, so I'll just wait for a few seconds so that you can, if you want, you can scan this QR code very really quickly. Uh, if you were not able to scan, don't worry, I will share it at the end as well. So the agenda of this workshop is I will talk about large language models, then uh, cover what the AI agents and tool use. And then after the presentation, I will also go into code and show you how you can make use of function calling with uh, large language models and like LLM servers. So the first question, why AI agents? Why do you need to have AI agents? I asked this question from ChatGPT, who won Oscars in 2024? And it wasn't able to answer my question. It was because it didn't had the knowledge after January 2022. So probably the model was only trained till the state and uh, it couldn't answer my question. Um, so after this presentation, after this workshop, you will be able to build um, LLM applications, which even if the LLM has been, uh, has a knowledge cutoff, it can find the relevant and latest information and answer your question. So AI isn't just going to be very helpful here with help of tool use, like uh, the tool here can be Google search, and we will cover all these things in more details. So let me give you a very brief introduction to large language models. Um, so most of you might already recognize this uh, diagram. This is from Attention is All You Need Paper. And uh, this whole di diagram is called uh, encoder-decoder network. Uh, the left part is called encoder. So a typical example of an encoder-based model is BERT, which is kind of used for sequence quality uh, uh, sequence prediction kind of task. And um, the right side is called decoder. So all the latest large language models you see, like Llama, Mistral, these are decoder-based models. The, the uh, combination of these two is called encoder-decoder. So an example of an uh, encoder-decoder-based model are like, um, uh, it, it's mostly used for like uh, T5 or sentence uh, translation kind of task. So what are LLMs? Uh, let's say I have this text called Capital of France is, and you feed this text to a last language model, and what happens is it will predict a lot of probability, and based on that probability, you will choose the next possible word. So here, let's say we choose Paris, based on our predicted probability. So you can think of these large language models as a very, on an abstract or high level, like a very um, advanced kind of autocomplete engine. Uh, so let's understand more about how it produces the whole sentence. So let's say initially at step zero, our sentence is capital of, and we send this, text to the last language model, and we run it for a few uh, iterations, which is maximum number of generated token. And uh, the next possible word would be 
uh, generated from the LLM would be France. We take this new sentence, capital of France, and again, we feed this into large language model. And the next predicted generated uh, word would be is. So we take, again, in step two, we take all these words, combine it, and send it back to LLM. And finally, the LLM will predict capital of France is Paris. So this is how like kind of iteratively it keep producing the next word and we get a whole sentence. Training phases. Uh, so the model that you see, for example, the chat GPT that you see is not a it, it not uh, the first version of the model. So it goes through some iterations of uh, different training phases. So the first phase is called pre-training where the model is trained on large amount of data from internet um, it's uh, like it takes months to pre-train a model a large language model the next step is supervised fine-tuning where a pre-trained model is then fine-tuned to kind of align the response on how we want like uh, uh, so you can pre-train llama uh, 8b and then fine-tune it on instruction kind of data set so that when you send when you send some kind of uh, when you ask a question from your LLM, it can uh, give you a response. Otherwise, it's just a, a sentence complicate, uh, com completion machine. Uh, the next step is uh, the next phase is reward modeling. What happens in reward modeling is we do preference optimization for uh, the reward modeling to basically kind of. Gen uh, align the model on the kind of response that users want so for example uh, if you ask the same question to uh, an llm it might generate different response on each uh, on multiple runs so we want to maximize the maximize the uh, reward for the model that is like expected by the user in reinforcement learning each generated token is being uh, rewarded so uh, in the next slide, you, you can see that this is a slide from Andres, one of Andres Karpati's um, uh, talk. So he explained this, all these stages in much more details, uh, like how much time each of the stages take, how much, um, what kind of um, data is used in each of the stages. So uh, you can uh, refer to this um, uh, later on, but. Uh, to summarize, basically we start with pre-training and end up with reinforcement learning, which leads to a model like ChatGPT, and it aligns the most with what humans want it to respond. Like it kind of simulate like you are talking with the uh, chatbot. So coming back to our question, uh, our model like uh, ChatGPT couldn't uh, respond to the latest information. Uh, how do I solve this? one of the way could be i fine tune the large language model with some latest data that like i can uh, for example i can scrape google every day and just fine tune my data but it's not a very scalable solution like it has a lot of teammate challenges uh you first you might not have enough data to fine tune a model um it's computationally expensive you need a lot of gpu to do that um, you will also need to retrain with time. Like if you train it today, tomorrow, there would be uh, some new news. And again, your model won't be able to answer the new questions. So that's why we are going to talk about AI agents here. And uh, we'll see how it can solve our question, uh, our problem. So what are AI agents? An AI agent can use external tool. An external tool could be uh, an external API, some kind of uh, database call, some kind of uh, data fetch call to extract some data from a sensor. It can collect and manipulate data. It can collect, for example, it can take some uh, CSV and uh, manipulate the data as well. Plan execution of task, you, you can, kind of uh, plan execution for example if you want to book a ticket from paris to london it can find out the cheapest ticket from paris to london that is like stage one then the, in stage two 
it can plan which of the minimize the cost so book the minimum price ticket so kind of uh, plan your task and then execute it execute it have a working memory what i mean with that is if you have like multiple subtask in a task there would be a main memory which like as the like humans have like we have a we know our like history and everything so the subtask will know what is what has happened before and uh, like similarly it can share the knowledge with each other here is a tweet from uh, andrew ang who is one of the very famous um, ai educator so he says tool use has the in which an llm is given function it can request to call for gathering information taking action or manipulate uh, manipulating data is it key design pattern so in any agentic workflow tool use is the key design pattern so this is the exactly main point like uh, using which you can build an ai agent this is a diagram which kind of shows um, a possible tool use uh, so you have a prompt for example uh, who won oscars in 2024 you send that to llm instead of directly generating the response you add in some logic which basically search on internet get some uh, top five results and based on the extracted results it will get as a context and then generate the answer so even if your llm doesn't have the answer for your current for your question it can add some extra context and answer your question so that's kind of um, an example of tool use where the tool is use is uh, the where the tool is internet search um, most of you might already have used OpenAI. If not, don't worry about it. So uh, this is how a typical OpenAI request looks like. Um, you don't need to worry. Just focus on the uh, white box here. So whenever you make a call to an OpenAI API, you send a message. And the message is basically kind of a list which, is, which contains alternating chat between a user and an assistant. So for example, in the first uh, message, you can see system message, role system, which is you are a helpful assistant. It is just to set a preface to the conversation. And then it just alternates between user, assistant, user, assistant. So the user asked, who won the World Cup series in 2020? And the assistant responded, the Los Angeles Dodgers won the World Cup series in 2020. And again, user asked, where was it played? The answer of this uh, question, uh, it looks like in this format, like you get a JSON response uh, and the, your output would be inside a dictionary called uh, choices, inside a key called choices. So you can extract the message here. Uh, just You can just focus on the white box if you haven't been uh, familiar with uh, OpenAI API. So the output of that uh, conversation is the 2020 World Series was played in Texas. So the chat GPT already had the like knowledge till the state, so it could answer my question. But then I asked, what is the weather like in London? And chat GPT was like, I'm unable to provide real-time information as my data isn't current. So it basically couldn't answer my question again because it didn't have the answer. But luckily, you can provide some functions to chat GPT so that um, it can provide you, like it can target, redirect you to that function. Then you can call that function and extract the data. To provide these function to chat GPT, you need to have this in this particular format. Uh, don't worry too much about it. This is basically just a Python function with some uh, like details so that ChatGPT knows exactly what is the name of the function, what is the argument, what does this function do. So if you look closely, 
um, in this JSON. So function name, get current weather. And in my Python function right here in the bottom, get current weather is my function name. Then description, get the current weather in a given location. And that's the, basically the doc string, get the current weather in a given city. Um, parameter, it contains your argument, function argument, location, which is string and description, the city and state. So yeah, and uh, this, uh, I have just here a uh, very uh, dummy function, which basically uh, based on the given string, it returns your dummy output here. So when you pass that string, that JSON to chat GPT, it will, instead of generating a response, like you can see here, content is none, it will generate something called tool calls. And if you go there, you can find it has predicted function, argument, location. What, what is this? So if you uh, extract these things, you can kind of know that, OK, my function was get current weather. The argument to this function is location with, I mean, the argument name was location and the argument value is lender. So basically, ChatGPT is telling me that you need to call this function get current weather. And as an argument, you need to pass London. So if I can pass London in this uh, function, Python function at the bottom, it will give me a response, a temperature. So uh, if you are wondering why I'm giving example of ChatGPT, uh, it's like kind of ChatGPT has become very standard. Uh, like LLM serving uh, format. So a lot of uh, different servers, um, API servers for large language models support this kind of format. So even like, um, for example, you can serve a Llama model in this particular format and have the exactly same uh, request, request payload. So you don't have to like uh, pass and have different code logic for different kind of uh, uh, different kind of things. Okay, so now I will go into some code and show you how exactly these things are working in more detail. So just for um, uh, introduction, so if you want uh, all this code is already available uh, on like in a lightning studio so you can go to this link uh, i'll share this link uh, later at the end uh, so you can go to this link and this contains the all the code that i'm going to show you and uh, you can basically just click here open in studio it will open let me show you actually so when you click open in studio it will duplicate the studio so you will get all the code in a completely reproducible environment and you can run everything that i am executing at them uh, i will going to i will be using to show you so it let's wait for a few seconds it uh basically duplicating every, all the more like uh code that i had in my studio and it will launch uh yeah so it has launched a VS code here in browser. If you want, you can also SSH it and um, um, SSH your VS code, local VS code. So by default, it has launched on a T4 GPU. If you want, you can switch to a different GPU as well, uh, like L4, 8NG, A100, or H100. Yeah, so it contains all the code. Um, let me open my studio here okay. hopefully the font size is um, visible to everyone so Let's see a question. Wait a moment. 
Uh, there's a question that would you please show the function slide once again? Yep. Um, Oh, I mean this one. So uh, I will cover this. This function is also in that notebook. So when I go through the code, um, you will see this again. So the slide and the code is kind of uh, uh, linked. Cool. Um, so let's go back to code. So let's initialize my OpenAI client and. This is the same format which I was showing to you on uh, on the slides. So I have my messages and I send that to my OpenAI client. And yeah, here is the response. So I asked the weather like in London, it doesn't have the real time capability so it couldn't answer my question. Now I have this function uh, which is a dummy function doesn't like really go and like check the real time with information but um just to show you uh for demonstration um it will i'm going to show you how to make use of openai to uh, send a function info and get the tool call results so yeah, this is my message. This is my tool uh, information. My tool information basically contains the name of the function. What does the function do as a description here? And then location, which is argument, and then description. So let's send this to my chat GPT call. And here you can see content is none but it has predicted tool calls and the tool call output contains name of the function that I provided and location London which I asked here as a question what is the weather like in London now chat GPT will not call the function for you what you need to do is you have to extract this info from the response and call this function with the uh, with the generated location argument so how do we do that so i have created a very uh, some helper functions which is going to let me do that so first i will run this code and then i will show you what's happening exactly so let's say i have initialized my llm then i have uh, binded this tool get current weather and then I run this. How's the weather in London? Then the response from tool. And now here. I am running the tool. So you can see that it has kind of extracted um, all the weather details for me. Partly cloudy with com comfortable temperature. Feels like 20 degrees Celsius. Yeah, sounds good. So let me show you exactly what happened here. So I have this function called get current weather, which is not a dummy function. Uh, so you'll see exactly uh, a kind of real world, uh, real application instead of a dummy one. So I have this uh, real function, get current weather, which basically sends a query to this website called wttr.n with the city name, and then just returns me a JSON with uh, current weather conditions and the function definition is same exactly what you are using in the dummy function uh, the argument is the same and the description is also same 
then I call this um, the same prompt. How's the weather in London? Get the same response. And what I do here is I call LLM.run tools and pass the output. And the output is basically um, kind of this particular object which contains the function call info. Now, let's see what this run tools does. So, so what this run tools do is it basically passes the response, the chat GPT response. So you can see it accepts chat completion, which is my response type here. Then it goes through the choices, uh, basically the list of messages. It goes through the tool calls. Uh, what is my tool call? Basically, it goes through this list here and extract the function name. So in our case, it would be get current weather. And then it call the tool. It passes the tool detail. So if you see here, it fetches the function. And how does it fetch the function? So if you remember, we did this call here, LLM.bind tools, which is, uh, and we pass get current weather. So basically, we have stored this get current weather function. Um, in a dictionary, and then we just fetch it by name. We pass the argument uh, tool dot function dot arguments, which is London, um, and then we just invoke that function with our argument, and then just return the response. So summarizing, what this do is it passes the response, um, the tool response. It goes through each of the item in the list. It gets the function name, get the argument, send the argument at the function name, get the result, and returns the exact response here. So this tool result will contain the response from the function. So I have printed it here so that you can see um, the, date, uh, the data. So content, name, role. So this is the content from the function. Next, what we do is we add another message to the uh, LLM response uh, based on the function return function value that thin step by step and answer my question based on the given above context. And my context is basically I added the tool result to the message list. So it provided me the response, uh, the detailed response. Um, there's another question in chat. Could you please explain the trigger from the chat GPT message and how it lets the system know that it is time for tool call? How does chat GPT know it is time to call tool? Yeah, so chat GPT doesn't call the tool. Um, and how it lets the system know? Okay, so let me show this code again here. So there are two cases. In case one, I pass my message, um, the standard message format, uh, and my content is what is the weather in London. The output would be chat GPT doesn't know how to call function. And because I didn't provide any details of the function, like uh, I didn't provide it uh, my uh, get current weather function in this call here. In the second call, however, you can see here, not only I provided the message, but I also provided tools. And the tools here is basically this thing, which contains the details, the name, the argument, the description of my function. 
When I provide this detail, so instead of refusing to answer, ChatGPT asked me that, hey, you can go to this function, pass this argument, and get the result. It won't call this function by itself because it's being executed somewhere else in uh, uh, OpenAI's cloud. So it asked me to call this function. Then what I do is I basically extract the data here, extract the um, chat GPT tool call response and call that function with the generated argument. Hopefully that answers your question. Awesome, I see, that's awesome. Cool, um, cool. Uh, feel free to keep your questions coming. Um, and once again, if you joined late, uh, you can see on the bottom right, there's an icon like a triangle, a square, and a circle. You can click there. You will see Q&A. You can ask your questions there. You can just click ask a question, type a question there, and click on post. OK. So Langchain tools. Langchain is a, one of the uh, very famous tool for creating LLM-based applications. And uh, I'm going to show you how you can create uh, like um, great custom tools that you can um, use with uh, OpenAI API or any other OpenAI compatible API. So to make a tool using uh, Langchain, you have all you have to do is like from Langchain dot tools import tool. It's a Python annotation, uh, a decorator which you basically add at the top of a function and then it will convert this function into a tool so if i execute this you can see that this is uh, uh this git current with a is not wrapped into some other class called a structured tool, which comes from OpenAI. Now, how do you like, uh, you need to have a dictionary or a registry where you can store your function with, by name so that when you are passing, you can retrieve those functions uh, and then make call of that. So I have this basically a tool registry, which what it does is it basically saves this function um, by name in a dictionary. And whenever I have to retrieve, I just do registry.get, uh, I pass a uh, value get current weather and it will return me this function. And then I can pass an argument and call this. So let's run this. Oh, there is one more question. Will ChatGPT be able to understand small changes and in textual input for the tool call? Users example, users say, users say, what is the temp like in London? Different terms, spelling, mistakes. Yeah, that's a really good question. Actually, so it depends on the quality of the model. If you if you are using a like good quality model like um, chat gpt or uh, gpt4 probably it will be able to deal with spelling mistakes uh, actually we can try it right now here so instead of london let's just say yeah so it kind of uh, predicts generates a correct response. So it auto-corrected itself, like instead of uh, the wrong spelling name, it corrected it to London here in the response. So it depends on the quality of the model, like probably a GPT-4 model would not make any mistake, but if you use like smaller model, uh, like mm, let's say, I don't know, five, 
two, then it might be possible to make some mistakes. Maybe not with like easy cases like uh, London, but maybe if uh, for a city which is not much in its training data, then maybe it might make some mistake. Okay, coming back to this. Yeah, here. So if you want to create a like um, tool use for yourself, like apart from uh, get current weather, which is a, like a really easy use case, you can uh, create a custom tool for your LLM um, using this land chain tools API decorator. So let me show you examples of some tools first, apart from the skit kind with them. So here is another example of a tool. It's called Wikipedia search. So if you want um, your LLM to be able to answer who won Oscars in 2024, maybe Wikipedia had some, uh, had some information. So, what I have done here is just like uh, use the Wikipedia API and uh, whenever like there is a, a query, which basically some question and pass this question to the Wikipedia API and then just return the response. Another example could be a Google search tool. So similarly, um, I have used a Google search library here which basically uh, kind of searches internet and return the first description from search. Um, you can also build multi-model kind of applications. Um, so what you can do here is, um, for example, let's say you have an image path or an image URL, you can, this particular tool, what this does is it opens the image, it passes it through a vision language model and uh, the predicted the predicted response is then used to describe the image, which is then passed on to the language model. So kind of you can give eyes to your language model, like create multimodal applications using this tool. um there's another question are there any lightning ai specific packages used in this code uh no there isn't any lightning ai specific package used in this code uh it's very um uh it's just an introduction to ai agents it, but um you can use this code on lightning ai studio and particularly you can also serve these kind of agents um using one of the lightning AIS library called let So yeah, you can run this code on lightning AI studio, scale it uh, uh, on multiple GPUs if you want. Uh, for example, like you can click this button here. If you want to run four GPUs, you can do that. For OpenAI, you probably don't need that, but if, for example, if you are running a model like uh, a local model, like Llama uh, 70 billion parameter model, you can do that for sure. But directly, we are not using any code from Lightning Game. I hope that answers your question. Cool. So uh, keep your questions coming. Uh, I know this is a like a virtual workshop, but let's try to make it more um, interactive. Cool. So, yeah, these were some of the um, 
tools. Uh, let me show you some more examples on what you can do with uh, these uh, language, uh, these uh, function calling tools. So yeah, so I showed you a tool for multimodal example. Um, here is a full example. Let me run this. So it's already here. So yeah, here I am using a cohere model. So cohere has this model called uh, command R, which I'm using here. And the, the tool I am using is Wikipedia search and image inspector, which basically reads the image and returns the description of that image. Um, I have binded the with a current, get current with a function. Similarly, I have binded here the image inspector and Wikipedia search. And then I have this image, which is a really nice um, broad walk. So I asked this question from uh, Cohere. Suggest me a location where I can go in London, which looks similar to this image. And then I just provided the image path. Now, what this LLM does is, instead of directly uh, generating a response, it gave me a function info, asked me to call this function, image inspector, provide the path of the image. So this is my image path, it's local. So, ah, I think this is not rendered correctly but there's no message here. So yeah, I extract, the, I extract the function here in this line, pass the argument, which is the example.jpg path to the image. And the output is this particular text content. So the image description is the image depicts a serene landscape with wooden rod walk. And in the next call, I append this message to my messages list, which is the list of conversation between user and assistant, and tell the uh, kind of in the description. So you can see updated message. I just appended the tool result. And my next question was, yeah. And then like met the tool call again with the updated message. And then the LLM generates. Here are some of the places where you can go based on this image. So yeah, you can see that all the generated stuff has some like parks and uh, some greenery. So basically, um, since I have this image, which is like, looks like a green park. It has generated, uh, listed some of the greener places in London for me to visit. So similarly, um, let's, I haven't tried this, but let's try my original question about who won Oscars with Google search here. So I have all the tools defined in this uh, code. So I'll just import it. Let's import Google search. Let's bind it. Okay. And let's, let's ask the question. Who won? Oscars and 2024. So, um, GPT has written this function info response, which says to call this function Google search and send the query Oscars 2024 winner list. Now, the next step would be we will extract this info and call the function. How do we do that? Just, I'll just copy from here. A 
Okay, so that's really easy. So all I need to do is like LLM.run tools, output, tool results. Let's see what is tool results. Awesome. So let me print it in a nice format. So this is actually truncated some of the It's a list. Yeah, so let's see the result. Ninety sixth, tenth March, twenty twenty four, Oscar winning actor, Robert Downey Jr. Emma Stone, Clean Murphy, um, Joy Randolph. Cool, awesome. So it gave me the response, um, but it's just the output from my function call. I wanted to render it nicely. So what I'll do is I will append this tool results to my message like. I have done it here. So output actually to the messages plus two recalls plus role user content based on the result answer my earlier question Yeah, so you can see the list of uh, conversation, the alternative messages. So initially, I asked who won Oscars. Then um, Cat GPT suggested me to make a tool call. I made that, and then this was my output. And then based, I asked it again based on the result. Answer my earlier question. So I will now make the same call to the LLM, but the new message. Mm, there is an error. Okay, so this role tool here should be something else. Let's say assistant. So the chat GPT has responded, uh, kind of rendered the message in much human readable format in the 2024 Oscars, the following individuals won. And you can see it's list like um, if you go and try to pass this, Message. Yeah, so it's kind of 
can run a, a kind of in you know, a markdown format like double star for bold. Cool. So that's how you it helped me answer my question. Let me now let me check if there's any question. Um, uh, yeah, feel free to ask any question. I think uh, the like if anything is unclear to you, just feel free to ask it. Um, so I mostly use OpenAI but let's say if you want to use some open source model what would you do so there is a very famous not very famous but uh, there are like a couple of uh, open source models that are like kind of fine-tuned for doing function calling uh, for example there's some model from now search uh, they have basically kind of fine-tuned llama for function calling there's another model called functionary which is kind of mistral based model that's also for function calling so i have an example that uses um the it uses the open source model for function calling so if you don't have open ai you can just like kind of spawn a like ai studio and just run it without even having an open ai account so let me run that for you. The code is here. Uh, I'm going just going to find it quickly. Uh, the yeah. So here's the code. Let me paste it somewhere. So this model is coming from Llama CPP, which is uh, another open source LLM based library for. Uh, running LLM inference very fast. Cool. So let me break this down. So I have imported all uh, my tools, uh, initialized the model here, and sent the tools to bind it so that it can register the function name with the actual function it's initializing the model okay it has initialized the model now let's ask the same question to this model using with the tool so it's basically um, at the stage calling the weather Cool. The current weather in London is partially cloudy with temperature 20 degrees Celsius, which is exactly what, like, I think, um, on very close to what ChatGPT had responded after the function code, uh, calling. So, if you want to see the code for this open source LLM, you can go to this folder, SRC agents LLMs, uh, Llama CPP folder. So, I am using this function functionary from MeetKai. Um, you can see how I have initialized the function here, like how it's working. That's kind of a small code. So, yeah, you can explore this repository uh, and try out like different models, like OpenAI, this open source one, or Command R plus. Um, so feel free to explore like uh, different models, uh, try to create different um, tools, run the tools, and feel free to share these things on Twitter. Like, uh, feel free to reach out to me if you have any question or like if you wanna 
um, if you have any issue while running the any of the code okay i think there are a few couple of questions does your tool call append to the chat gpt message response get passed as is or gets added in full modification okay so the question is um does my tool call response gets appended to the chat gpt message as it is yeah so you can as add it as it is without doing any modifications. So for example, I got the tool result here. Let me, yeah, print it, tool results. So I got the tool results here. I just appended it to my original message and then my message became like this. So you can just, um, add it like but if you want you can add some extra modification like if you want to like uh, fine tune your response you can do that who is the hosting the open source lm that you are using right now so this open source model that i am using right now it's uh, being it's running directly in my notebook in my environment here and uh, i am using a t4 gpu so it's running on gpu on this uh, lightning ai studio so you can just sign up here you can like uh get like 30 or 15 don't remember exactly uh cloud credits which you can use to um have like run these things on gpu where can i access the folder so yeah where let me paste this in chat. So I pasted the link in chat, which basically contains the studio. Uh, it's completely reproducible studio. So everything that I showed you, all the code, everything exists in this uh, studio. All you need to do is click on this button. It will duplicate an exactly similar replica. And um, if you don't have an account, you can just sign up and it will, um, yeah, you will get some free credits which you can use to run um, uh, like these kind of LLMs for free. Cool. Yeah, so that was how you can make use of function calling to um, serve these models as a AI agent. And if you have uh, any other question, like you can feel free to scan this QR code. You can uh, join the Discord community of Lightning AI, um, ask questions. You can also follow us on Twitter. We keep sharing um, uh, some great stuff on uh, large language models um, and PyTorch Lightning, Lightning Fabric. And if you are in New York, SF, or London, we are also hiring for these locations so uh, feel free to reach out to me um, if you need any referral i would be happy to do so so feel free to scan this qr code connect with me um, and find the attached link to the resources and in the meantime if anyone has any question feel free to ask it as well awesome thank you everyone uh, for joining in. Uh, so I, I am in London. I won't be um, physically present in the in this uh, conference. Where can we apply for new positions? You can check out the lightning.ai slash careers site for that. Uh, thank you so much for joining. <laughs>